Hey everyone, today I'm going to be drawing a set of gods from different mythology. Also, I'd like to add that I had to kinda redo how I was going to do the drawings, so if I'm talking about doing multiple drawings for characters, just ignore it. To start off, let's begin with Greek mythology, I'll be drawing two gods from each so my two for Greek will be Artemis and Hades, due to them being my favorites. Starting with Artemis, she is the goddess of nature, childbirth, wildlife, the moon, the hunt, sudden death, animals, virginity, young women, and archery. Now I know I could look one inch down on the Wikipedia article I copied all that from and just draw the statue, but that's not fun. So instead I did research and this was what I found, she is taller than the other goddesses, she had a feminine body that was seen as idealized, her curves were said to be too maturely feminine to belong to a virgin, she had lean hips and smaller breasts compared to the other goddesses. Her clothing consisted of a short tunic that ended at the knee and ends were embroidered. She had a bow on her back and hunting dogs that followed her. She was said to travel through forests with nymphs, mortals, and hunters. It is said she would bathe in the forest with nymphs, as you do. Since they are a goddess, I perceive them as a having some sort of astral body, from what I know, Roman gods and Greek gods are pretty much the same, some are different, but overall, the same, they do go by different names and are usually named after planets, Artemis somewhat gets that treatment. As you heard before, she is the goddess of the moon, so I'd like to add a body that shows the stars, space, but most importantly, the moon. I want to give her a usually stern and blank expression, this is because hunting is a usually serious sport that takes a lot of focus. I assume she is focused and serious at all times, she is also believed to be a Rois, which means she feels little to none romantic or sexual attraction to others, people say that they think she is believed to be a toxic feminist, or in other words, hates men. And there is a few relationships she has had with men and about one out of three ended badly, so I don't think she hates men, I think she'd rather just stick to her hunting instead of focusing on someone. I'd expect her to give off a sense of calm and serenity. Based off her connection with nature and wildlife. I think she might be free with her body as well judging that she bathes with others and only is upset when someone starts taking it in a sexual way, I feel like if she hates anything it would be selfish sexual acts. I know she's the goddess of childbirth and you usually need to go through a sexual act for that to happen, that's why I added selfish onto it. Lastly, I think she'd have an idea of freedom, since she is the god of sudden death, I think she would want to live life without fear. I don't know if the gods can die, but I still feel like she would want to be free with herself and do what she wants so she can get the most of life, but still being affectionate to life, because even though if she has a life, that is a long one. She knows the hunters that follow her have short ones in comparison, showing affection to their lives and teaching them her views on respect towards life, she sees them be born and wants them to enjoy life on the chance that it can be taken away at any moment. Hades is the king of the underworld and god of the dead and riches it is said that he is stern and comes off as cruel similar to death. But I don't really believe this, because he first of all, is the god of the dead, not the god of death, what's the difference? Well, the god of death actual goes through the process of making sure people die, while Hades looks over the souls of the dead, which don't do much so his job is extremely boring and I don't really judge him for coming off as stern and cruel, because despite being a well-respected god, he must hate his life. I don't think he is selfish, but sympathetic instead, he doesn't release any souls from death and doesn't answer prayers, but there is a story where Hercules goes to the underworld to save someone he loved but lost, he tells Hades his story and how much he loves the woman. And Hades just breaks down from the story and frees her soul back to life. He is also understanding in the story of Hades and Persephone, where he kidnaps Persephone and crowns her as his queen, and surprisingly, when Persephone's mom wants her to come back, Hades agrees for her to go. But he gets afraid that he will never see her again and tricks her into eating pomegranate seeds, which somehow means she has to stay in the underworld for a few months every year. So personality I think he's sympathetic, skittish, and kind-hearted, but overall, can be stern. 
Hades was said to be the most beautiful between Zeus and Poseidon, having black hair, was often very intellectual and giving off no fright or threatening emotions. He had soft kind eyes and was very strong, his clothing isn't described but it won't be too much to think of an outfit for him. I'd assume he would wear a purple toga, the reason being that purple was a dye used by the wealthy, I'd also assume he would have gold lining showing symbols of nature, mainly shrubbery, trees, and flowers due to his connection with Persephone, and he has multiple symbols. Most being of the things listed. I'd like to give him a flower tattoo as well, tattoos were used to punish outsiders, and I would think he would feel bad for what he did to Persephone, so in return, he would give himself a tattoo to punish himself and pay tribute to his wife. For his armor, I think it should represent animals since his symbols also consist of multiple animals, for example, dogs, horses, sheep, cattle, owls, and sepants. Another symbol being chariots, I think he would have these symbols on his chariot as well. Finally, for his body. I want to keep the astral body idea for him, but I'd like it to be different, his planet is Pluto which I find to be one of the most interesting plants in our solar system, if you did not know, Pluto has water inside of it. Possibly frozen, but also possibly flowing and could also be harboring life inside of it, I like the idea that there is life in our solar system, but the fact that it is the furthest planet from the sun and from us, a place where life should not exist is possibly thriving with life which I just feel like is very fitting for Hades. Another thing is that I'd love to show somewhat absence of stars. If this is where life ends, then I think it's fitting that there are no stars here, showing all lights of life have been blocked out. But I will leave one. A white star being blocked out by a planet that is mostly dark with a purple hue. This is a planet that is theorized to exist in our solar system. And its current name is Persephone the reason for the white star is because it is also possibly a part of another system, which if so would be the second planet from its sun, that sun being a white star. Hel is the Norse goddess of death, and daughter of Loki, and one of the catalysts for Ragnarok, she is cruel, greedy, and harsh which you can't blame her for really, her father was the god of mischief and she was thrown out of Asgard as a child due to being a part of the prophecy of Ragnarok. She was said to look half-skeleton and half-human her skeleton being black and her face giving off a fierce Dimnor. I would assume her to be skinny and look sickly and pale, this due to her life in Helheim, her home and the underworld in Norse mythology. She would only leave in time of plague or famine, so I think this is a fitting appearance for her. For clothing I'd assume her to wear a strap dress, something worn by women in anti ant Norse and is still worn today, it's basically a normal dress in my opinion. I'd imagine her clothing to have been worn and have frostbite on it, showing her fall from Asgard and how Helheim became a prison for her, now her body is going to be a little hard. I know this is a different mythology, so I don't exactly have to give her a similar body, but the starts were important in Norse mythology too, so I think it's fitting to give her something, 949 Hel is what I'm going with. 949 Hel is an asteroid on the outside of the asteroid belt, named after the Norse goddess. It seems right, a cold lonely asteroid on the edge of a sea of other asteroids as cold and lonely as her. Nashu is the Egyptian god of the moon, he is seen as youthful compared to the other gods, and has been seen as wearing a falcon head with a sun and crescent moon on top of it. He was also perceived as a sort of living mummy, it was said when the moon shined brightly, women conceived. Cattle were fertile and fresh air flowed freely. He is a healer, quoted as the light of the night, otherwise known as a full moon. I'd expect him to wear a white cloak covering his bandages, and underneath his bandages being his astral-like body, obviously showing the night sky and the moon. He would also be wearing his falcon skull with a side lock of hair falling from beneath the skull, and finally a mendant necklace, a necklace worn by him and Hathor. That is the end of this video, I will most likely make more, probably ones that don't have to do with death or the moon. But we'll see, hope you liked this video, and have a good day. If there is another god from a mythology that you'd like me to draw, then please tell me in the comments, and I'll look into it.